was a new kind of CPR, and it was pioneered right here in Arizona. It's a better way to save people whose hearts have stopped. I'm sorry, what's the address? Oh, my husband not responded. Okay, what's your address? This is a call to 911 in Scottsdale, Arizona. A 53-year-old man is in cardiac arrest, and that's his wife on the phone. Okay, is he breathing? Okay, listen to me. Someone needs to start CPR. Do you have anyone there that can do CPR? Someone needs to... Now listen carefully to the dispatcher. You need to put him on his back. Okay, put the heel of your hand on his breastbone in the center of his chest. Okay. And notice what you don't hear. And then you need to put your other hand on top and interlock your fingers. There was nothing in there about breaths. It was nothing about giving breaths. I need to press straight down into his chest, okay? Okay. And you go quick, okay? Start counting for me. Okay, one, two, three. You see, it's all about compressing the chest. And until just recently, that would have been unthinkable. But it does work. And here's why. For the first several minutes after your heart stops, your blood still has plenty of oxygen. As expert breath holders know, it's sort of this trick that your body plays on the mind. Synchronized swimmers know this. You can go without breathing far longer than you think, far beyond the point when your body is starting to scream for air. With practice, almost anyone can hold their breath for two or three minutes. Experts can go beyond seven minutes. Seven minutes without a breath, think about that. But only if that oxygen gets to your brain, either pumped by your heart or by chest compressions. Now, in most cases of cardiac arrest, that's still not enough time. But what if you could buy just a bit more? What if you could slow the clock? So where are we right now? So right now we're in the Center for Resuscitation Science Laboratories at the University of Pennsylvania. And this is Dr. Lance Becker. He's the director. When I trained, it was like, you're alive, you're dead. It was just a sharp line between the two, like going off a cliff. Now we know it's nothing like that. It's this gradual process. And that process means that there's an opportunity where we could do something. Some would say, look, you know, don't bother with the mouth to mouth at all. You know, you've got oxygen in your bloodstream. The key is to move it around the body. The trick is get as many compressions in as you can. And then if you can get a little extra oxygen in, that's fabulous. But the priority is on those chest compressions. Just so I'm clear, you're saying go up there and do it as fast and hard as you can. I mean, what are we talking about? A hundred times a minute? A hundred times a minute with pretty much enough force that if you do it right, there'll be sweat dripping off your nose after two or three minutes. Your arms are straight over the guy's chest and you are... Just straight over. Push, 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 push. What you're describing could save lives. It has saved lives. Dr. Ben Bobro oversees emergency services for the Arizona Department of Health. Now, when he took over in 2004, the odds of surviving a cardiac arrest in Arizona were just as grim as anywhere else, less than 3%. We said, you know, it's hard to do a lot worse than 97% of the people dying. But we really said, you know, we, 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 had, we have to do something better and we've got to do something quickly. One of the first things he did was change those CPR guidelines. For paramedics in Arizona nowadays, it's 200 chest compressions in two minutes, then defibrillation or a shock four times over before giving that first artificial breath. For lay people in training courses like this one, and from 911 dispatchers, the advice is even simpler than that. Don't bother giving any breaths at all. And what I want you to do is we're going to do compression only CPR. So you're going to and within a year of Bob Rose changes, there was dramatic success. In fact, uh, a statewide survival rate has more than tripled. More than triple. In some parts of the state, it's even better than that. Last year, with several new procedures, including this better CPR, paramedics based in Flagstaff saved more than a third of their cardiac arrest victims. But back in Pennsylvania, time was still running out for Chris Brooks. 